Um, eerily reminiscent to 9-11. Yep. Uh, feel like it's worse. Yeah, um, for sure. But so where, where to start? Where did we start as an organization? And, um, and kind of what's our response been yep. in the last couple of days? So, you know, we started internally first because there were a lot of decisions that we had to make. Um, and, and we want to, um, as everyone does, um, take the uh, uh, best advice on what to do for our people. And so um, we have uh, worked very hard at the social distancing, which is very hard for us because we, <laughs> you can see, we, uh, uh, we're pretty gregarious, and so um, we just changed a lot of things internally. Um, we had to make a lot of hard decisions, um, one of which was to just sort of close the building to the public. Um, and being the type of organization we are, that is, that is not what we uh, would enjoy doing. Um, and so even the way we staff it, um, some of us are working remotely on different days. Um, you know, there are child care issues for people's families, just like many of you are dealing with. And so um, that's really where we started, was just internally uh, figuring out how to, uh, how to keep the uh, people in the building and, and answering uh, phone calls and, and trying to help out our members in the business community. Yeah, so um, we did kind of pivot when um, we felt like it was the, uh, the old model of, you know, get the oxygen mask on yourself make some decisions about your own business um, and put ourselves in a position to to help others. Um, and we'll probably um, get into that later as to what some of those were for us and what that really looks and felt like. But the last two days, we've really been focused on outreach to members. And so maybe what, what have we learned during that? So we looked at our membership um, database and really tried to focus in on many of the small businesses that we thought um, would have some instant impact from this uh, and uh, divided those up among our team and so uh, yesterday and then again this morning many of us were calling people um, I made several calls personally and you know it reaffirmed what I already knew about Conway um, which is uh, just a lot of good people out there and and there wasn't a single business that I talked to that wasn't concerned about their um, employees um, trying to do everything they could to um, uh, keep people on board whether that meant shortening work weeks shortening hours um, doing whatever they can to keep people employed um, obviously this has been very very hard for our uh, restaurant uh, and hotel um, industry here. Um, you know, early on as we were um, thinking about this, and I think I posted something on Facebook about it, um, this is really the, normally the, the, the great season for us in Conway with youth sports, and so our restaurants and our hotels are accustomed to being busy, and really two weeks ago on Saturday, we had almost record numbers. I mean, we had, we had one of our restaurants that said it was the best day they had ever had since they had been open because we had so much activity in the city. And, you know, to see it just fall off a cliff is hard for people. It's hard emotionally, it's hard financially. And um, so, uh, you know, we heard those stories from people. Um, but I also heard optimism and I heard, um, just this fortitude that we're going to get through and we're going to get on the other side of this and we're going to take care of each other. And um, so, and I think people are trying to get innovative too. I mean, technology definitely allows us to get more innovative in how we deliver products to people. Yeah, so um, we've called, you know, and part of, uh, you know, we've got a fixed number of staff and we're spread out and we're, we're kind of reeling and getting our feet under us um, to do business. Uh, we targeted roughly 25% of our folks who intuitively were going to be most affected. Um, we're calling them. We're doing that the old fashioned way. Uh, people don't answer their phones. It's <laughs> usually leave a voicemail and then you, you get back in touch with them. But, um, you know, one reason for the Facebook Live and for the briefings like this is to um, let people know if we haven't gotten in touch with you and you're being affected, um, reach out to us, let us know. And what we're asking people, you know, we're telling them, is there something that the chamber can do for you, big or small? Right. Uh, there's 
again, we've been asked to um, do some things that are probably best carried out at the, by the federal government. <laughs> And then we've been asked to make some really small phone calls and introductions. And, um, you know, that's what we do. That's what you uh, paid your dues for. And that's, you know, the value we promise. Um, you know, might want to, this might be a good opportunity to re-articulate to some people who is all doing business in what we call 900 Oak Street, who's in the building, who's part of the, the Green Sea, um, and, and what some of the different strategies are for them. Yep, so, you know, we, we have the chamber, obviously, um, and then we have what we kind of classify as our sister organizations. So the Conway Development Corporation, of course, is the economic development entity. Uh, we have the Conway Downtown Partnership, and then the Conway um, uh, Con Convention Visitors Bureau, which is funded by the Conway A&P, and that's your um, two-cent uh, restaurant and hotel tax. And so each of those have sort of different um, components of what they're of what they're doing right now, um, and trying to sort of stay in their silo. Um, Kim Williams with our downtown partnership. I mean, there's nobody that works harder uh, for um, a community of businesses than her, and I know she has been um, spending a lot of time with people um, as they're making um, these decisions on what to do with their business. Um, the CDC on the economic development side. Um, we had been having really an unbelievable year with a lot of activity. Um, we have not seen anyone say that those projects are off yet. Um, we're obviously would not be surprised if some of them might not be delayed, but we're continuing to answer questions from different companies that are interested in coming here. And um, so we're still sort of business as usual there. Um, on the CVB, and I think it's better for you to probably talk about it because you have more interface with that group than I do. Yeah, so very proud of um, our team. You know, it's people are being affected in ways you don't see. The restaurants are being affected in ways you, you do see. I mean, the empty parking lots, um, you know, the receipts, as you mentioned, kind of fell off of a cliff from a, a high point. Um, very proud of our team coming up with... Uh, Conway to go, so hashtag Conway T O G O. We got some quality print materials out, got them into the hotels. I uh, had some gift cards behind that for people that are traveling, um, maybe stuck away from their uh, families, maybe dealing with who knows what during this time. And uh, there's still an opportunity to um, make a com make Conway to leave a positive impact, and maybe you can make a bigger impact and a more memorable impact. Um, you know, during times like this. Also creating the awareness when people may have, you know, concerns about, um, you know, eating in restaurants or, or getting out or, or food safety. You know, there's nothing out there that says restaurant food is, uh, it's actually prepared in, in extremely, uh, you know, clean and regulated sure. situations. So when we look at the innovation and in curbside delivery and just traditional delivery, uh, we really want to promote that. We want to celebrate it. We want to um, ask people to think about restaurants that maybe you don't associate with delivery. Domino's Pizza usually comes to your house, but there are um, takeout orders uh, on alternatives from restaurants that you associate with dining in. I mean, sure. Wonder House, Streetside Creperie, some of our downtown folks. And, uh, and you mentioned the downtown businesses. Um, they're unique, which is why they're represented by the Downtown Partnership different organizations so trying to to hit on um all of those fronts and and to look for opportunities um in a new normal and, right. and to be quick to the party there um want to talk about um let's talk about some uh where we stand on on events you know i think it's mm. Yeah, so um, with our annual meeting that was uh, coming up um, uh, in April, the very first part of April, um, ordinarily it would have been tonight, um, which would have been <laughs> disastrous for us, but uh, it was out a little bit this year because of our speaker, um, so we did have time to um, go ahead and postpone that, and, and I use the word postpone on purpose <laughs> because we uh, uh, fully hope that we get to do that. Um, 
And this year, Jamie and his had put a lot of work into sort of the theme, which is so timely now um, with, with what's going on. Um, because we were really, um, I think we're known for having these really fun and funny annual meetings. This one was going to be a little more somber, and, uh, but, but I think very meaningful in looking at the history of this place and, and um, how we all sort of pull together and, and the things that are unique about us. And so we've gotten a lot of content. I know you've worked hard on a lot of that content, hearing from people. Um, and and it, again, it's very timely considering what's going on now because the, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak, with how we help one another. So, um, you know, the, the good news is that um, if things improve, um, well, let's say when things improve, we'll be ready to um, execute that annual meeting pretty quickly. And I think uh, as we've talked internally that, um, you know, it's going to look and feel a little bit different than anything we've ever done, even than what we were planning to do, um, just because what we're going through now merits that. So our hope is that, you know, um, we get to do that sooner than later. Um, obviously, toad suck days is a question that many people have, uh, have, have asked. Uh, you know, we have not officially made um, a statement on that, but I think it's safe to assume that that will not be going on um, at its normal time. Um, but we are working with some of our larger vendors uh, to um, see if there are alternate dates, um, either in the summer or fall, that might work for them. Um, one of the things about the festival that I think a lot of people um, don't realize is there are a good number of, of those vendors uh, for the festival who live here in Conway or in our trade area. And so uh, the festival's very important to them. I mean, they're small business people, and their livelihood is based off of not just our event, but other events. And so um, we are working with them to see if we can come up with an alternative date, um, you know, summer, fall, that we could um, do toad suck days. And, and, you know, we're all going to need a toad suck days um, at the end of this. And so um, we're, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, and it's, you know, we're, we're uh, it, it's time for authenticity and transparency. And, you know, we spent a lot of time last week, even before this week, um, talking to some small businesses about tough decisions to make. Um, you know, I want to tell you, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have the resources of the team in place to, um, you know, do briefings like today, to do, um, the work we've done this week, um, you know, without community support, I did want to wait until we had um, more eyeballs to uh, talk about City Church is who's powering this production. Um, all the parts that look good, is City Church, the content, that's us. We'll have <laughs> to take blame for that. But, um, you know, so you've got someone, um, you know, providing some help there. But our sponsors, our chairman circle members, ever down to our dues paying members, um, our sustaining our organization. We've, we've, um, are making sacrifices financially. Our team, um, is, is absorbing, you know, those together so we can focus a hundred percent on, um, on our members. But, um, things like toad suck days and, and all the events that we do, you know, they, there's a reason you see those names and those logos and supported by and presented and, and all those things. And so it's, um, it's a difficult time for anyone in the That's events right. business and concessionaires and all those people, especially. And so really, I mean, thank you for supporting us all these years because you, you've done so in a way that allows us to have a little bit of a cushion, even though we have had to make some hard decisions internally to, uh, to keep the doors open for a period of time um, when business is not as usual. Um, it's been years and years of, of support from the business community that um, has sort of allowed us to uh, focus right now. Yeah, and so one thing that I've got that, you know, we've been, we've been reaching out, and so uh, I think you know, by lunch today, we'd talked to about 125 members where we'd had conversations and we've got the spreadsheet going where, um, you know, we're asking, are you affected? How are you affected? Um, are you interested in things like SBA loans? Um, 
so we're trying to be supportive and encouraging. I think that's as, as important a role as we have as anything. Uh, but we're also trying to be a source of good advice. So um, please, you know, pay special attention to our Facebook page and the things that we put on there. The Facebook is, is probably more accurate and timely and updated than our static web page, and that's because this situation is just really fluid. But um, we have talked to people, uh, and we want to make sure that they know about the opportunities. So uh, one is an SBA, the potential for SBA loans, which we think that Arkansas will be uh, eligible to start uh, the application process as a business owner, hopefully tomorrow or early next week. And we've got resources um, on our Facebook page about how to do that. Uh, the other one is meeting with your traditional um, loan officer or your lender, or whoever your lending financing relationship is with. And um, we are going to, at two o'clock, uh, have a, a local banker or two on hand uh, to talk about what you need to do to prepare yourself for um, a period of tight liquidity or cash flow crises. Um, and then closer to 2.30, we'll probably have Jeff Standridge with the conductor here, and this is today, uh, to talk specifically about the SBA uh, loan program. But, you know, maybe just um, what recommendations, kind of, Brad, are, are you saying, what, what, from the things you've heard over the phone and the things we've done from our outreach, what are you learning are good practices to put to work? Yeah, well, I think many of the things that you talked about, people are talking to their lender um, and, and seeing what kind of, of uh, accommodations can be made right now um, to help us get through, obviously, what we hope is a shorter period of time. Um, you know, I, I do think the more I talk to people, the more I realize how important it is for us to talk to each other. Um, there are a lot of feelings and emotions right now. I mean, we've seen it in our building. Um, for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> you know, I just said I, I, I went off of a cliff on Tuesday and went down the rabbit hole, and it took me a few hours to get out of it. Um, and, and we're seeing that internally with our team, with, you know, people are uh, upset. I mean, so much of this is out of our control. Um, and so, you know, it, it's good to talk about it. Um, uh, the social distancing makes it hard sometimes to comfort each other. Uh, but I do think that there is value in that. And, and there are times in some of these conversations that we're having with our members where I just think they want someone to listen and they want to process what they're feeling. They want to know what you're feeling. Um, and that's what makes this community great is those relationships. I mean, those are always going to win the day. Um, and, and we have great relationships here. Yeah, and we'll have a taste of, um, Brad talked some about what, where we were headed with annual meeting. We are gonna, um, we're gonna put some of that content to use very soon just because I think it's helpful because there is a thread of encouragement there and that is, it's so important just mm -hmm. to thank you. Hey, thanks for checking on me. Um, you know, we talked about encouraging people and thanking people, being grateful. Um, it, it, it helps your immune system, it, serotonin boosts, all of those things. Um, trying to see what else, what questions we've had. You know, I think what I would just say is, you know, we learn this by talking to people uh, and processing. Um, and we'll get into this with the banker, but if, if you're not going to be around for that show, you know, talk to your lender and ask for things that will help your cash flow and your liquidity. You know, talk about, um, you know, if you have debt, can we restructure it? Uh, can we defer payments? Can we go interest only? You know, think about the, um, how much cash on hand you'll need uh, for the next, you know, six months uh, and talk about letters of credit. There have been regulations uh, have been loosened up this week from the FDIC and the OCC uh, to let lenders uh, accommodate people. And we're seeing those, and so you need to take advantage of them. And then look at your uh, private relationships with vendors and landlords. Uh, I know that um, we've heard about folks who are working with their landlord proactively, and so you can, you can maybe adjust your fixed operating expenses right. and change your cash flow. Right. 
You know, and as a community, I think, and I said this last night on Facebook, I, I think we should look at all the things that we've worked really hard to build, um, and we've built a great, diverse business community, um, and, and those things that we want to be here at the end of this, we have to support in any way possible. And, you know, I really appreciate when I go through um, Instagram or Facebook, I love seeing um, posts from everybody about how they have shopped local, how they have um, done the Conway to go um, uh, hashtag, um, because there's plenty of stuff out there <laughs> that's uh, not pleasant right now. Um, and it's great for us to encourage each other and continue uh, some sort of commerce here through this time. Yeah, so um, maybe as you, uh, we're going to wrap up here, but we've got kind of an idea on other um, briefings. So topical, this was kind of an introduction. I uh, wanted to just kind of let you know what the chamber has been up to. I do think that uh, I told you later this afternoon, we're going to talk about uh, your banking relationship specifically. Then we're going to, that'll be at 2 o'clock. At 2.30, we'll talk about SBA lending. And then I would expect next week for us to go into topics like unemployment. Uh, there is a shared unemployment program mm -hmm. yep. with the Department of Workforce Services. If you are on the um, edge of should I reduce hours or should I you know, let my folks go, um, this may be a hybrid because yep. um, I know everyone's tr really trying to <laughs> keep their business alive but make decisions that are best for their employees. That may be a topic. We may bring some folks in uh, to talk about uh, personal investments because if you can button yourself up there, then you can focus on uh, your business uh, and your people. But I don't see um, you know, necessarily any more questions. And so... With that, we'll just stay in touch and wash your hands, be safe, uh, be kind to each other. Absolutely.